Welcome, everybody, to the Justice League podcast. First episode with Gavin. What's up? So, me and you just talking. It's just like the prelude of it. I wanted just to get you comfortable with this kind of format and for me to be comfortable. Because I knew when I first recorded it. One, I just didn't feel comfortable talking for some reason. I listened to it and just didn't sound confident at all. Uh It sounded awkward. Yeah, it was probably pretty bad. <laughs> oh no, yeah, it's awful. If you rewatch it, and I just is it off. really? I like that clip though of like you just like following me like walk as I'm walking over there. Like that oh, was no. cool in the intro. Yeah, that's the best part about the video. But I need to stop clicking my pen. But I just wanted to get you a little comfortable with like understanding and answering questions. Yeah. Because you are a ski instructor. You are a very good in ski instructor. I <laughs> praise you on that. You are probably one of the best at Shawnee Mountain. And um, how serious of a role do you take being a ski instructor when you're teaching kids? I take my role in their like ski development very seriously. You know, like I don't mess around. I try and enforce good habits so that they don't have bad habits that need to be broken later, you know, by possibly another instructor or by myself, you know, and, you know, I, I make people smile and it's a good thing because, you know, if they learn how to do something that they didn't know how to do before, then like they take something away from it. I have a good time teaching them and, you know, it's just fun for everyone involved. So I take the job seriously. As much as I do, I take the job I try to take the job as serious as possible. Of course, yeah. you can't take it serious because yeah, you have to have it's not a job. It, you know? So, like, for me, like, when I teach, I know what my level of teaching is. Like, yeah. I know where my best is and where my worst is. Obviously, I know for a fact if you're trying to tell me, if you tell me to try to teach parallel skiing, I am not going to be the best teacher at doing that because yeah, I decided, well, not that I decided, I just was not taking the correct steps as I should but I also don't want to pay the money to learn like I, I yeah. know how to parallel ski I know how to stop but if you tell me try to teach someone how to parallel ski at the best that they could possibly do I would only be able to give them the basics of it like I know how to teach like I know for a fact how to teach parallel skiing yeah am I the best at teaching it no am I good at teaching top of the beginner hill of course, that's where my best moves is. My I, my best is teaching kids how to feel comfortable and turning at the top, at the top of the hill, top of greens, because that's just how I am. I know you, you're better at teaching, ve- like first timers, and top of the, the giant mountain. That's what we're gonna call it, the top of the mm-hmm. actual hill. Top of the hill, yeah. Because those are where you shine at the most. You're never in the ski we will because I'm sorry, but I don't see you as someone that's the best at teaching the little little oh, kids. No, God no. For me, I I also see myself. That's where I shine because yeah. I know when to not take myself serious. I know when to fall on the ground to make kids laugh. Yeah. But for you, I take I myself you, way too seriously to be doing that. Because <laughs> for me, I'm able to disconnect myself from yeah, being the person I who I want to be versus the person who I know would make kids happy. Because that's, at the end of the day, for many instructors, they really don't understand the humanity side of teaching, if that makes sense. Yeah. So like for me, when I'm teaching skiing, you kind of have to like relate with the kids. Yeah. Or like ha- at least have let them have fun. Because I know... And my sister's not like the best at it yet, just because this is her first year. Like she gets mad at the kids. Like, oh. <laughs> like she'll ask, why aren't you listening? You can't say that to a child because then no. that makes them feel like that, that's bad. You can't yeah. do that at all. <laughs> so that's why you just got to, it's just when you're teach safe, like you're teaching a kid how to turn and they're four years old. You can't be like, God, you're not, you can't just be like, God, why aren't you listening to me? You have to do this. No, you have to find find a way in your own teaching style and be like, why isn't this kid understanding turning? You have to do something. So like something I kind of adopted this season was as bad as it sounds saying, 
pretend like I like they so like when they turn, you have to like I'm gonna just so pretend these are skis where my fingers yeah. are. You kind of have to tell them point the tips of your skis at me the entire time. So they subconsciously just try to force their toes right or left. It's gonna be reverse on your screen, obviously. But right or left, and that's how it's just pushing off the opposite leg. You can't really tell kids that because they have no idea. Yeah, they don't so, even know what the hell opposite means, dude. <laughs> so I, I adopted just saying, pretend I'm the bad guy because everybody knows what a bad guy is. Everybody yeah. knows what stupid villains are. So then I'm like, what's your favorite thing in the world? And they'll be like, oh, I love pens or I love puppies. Or and I'll be cream. like, I, yeah. And I'll be like, <laughs> I just stole the best batch of ice cream in the world and you have to chase me. And then the kids will get mad and be like i want that thing back yeah and they'll chase you and they'll listen so teaching at a lower level is completely different at a higher level and how do you yeah. take teaching at a higher level in your so, peaks and valleys if that makes i'll sense. start with lower level because i have a couple things i want to say about that um I'm not going to teach, I'm not going to do in like what you do, like relating, like making it a situation, right? Well, like I, I give didn't a lot even, of tasks. I don't even I make it a situation. I just make yeah. it like, I try to like make things fun because, yeah, obviously, or like you could be like, you're riding a unicorn or something stupid like that. Yeah. Not stupid in a sense, but like, you know what I mean? Like, something it's kinda, something because. Yeah, just the dopamine in our brains have obviously it lessens when, yeah. as we get older. So we have yeah. to try to find ways to dial it up and think on their level. That's true. That's very true. Um, yeah. I'm not too good at doing that. Unfortunately, I definitely will start to think about it in the future. Now that you said something about like, said, like I got your insight on it. I'm good at teaching beginners because it's very easy. You know, they know nothing. So you can, you're starting with a blank slate. And when you know, like, as much as I do about skiing and how exactly it works, you could tell them, okay, this is the ski. This is how it works. Now you're going to do this. And if you do it this way, right, then you'll be great at it. Then you have them do like a boot drill, right? Like I have them make a pizza with their boots on, like no skis, right? And for them, like that, like opens up a whole new door. Like, oh, so now we know how to do it. Like take it, like slow down the steps, you know? That's something I learned from Robin. Slow down the steps. Don't try and force too many things at once. Like, you ever teach one foot drills? Have them just stand still no. and balance on one leg first, you know? And then, like, go, like, little tiny steps and have them balance on one leg skiing, like, straight. And have them balance on one leg turning. And have, have them balance on the inside leg, you know? Work your way up to it. And that's where you and I differ. Because if I'm teaching a first-time lesson, I'm jumping straight into it. Yeah. Like, I'm not, like, I've, like, when I first started, they told us, doing boot like doing the one boot drills are important yeah they obviously they are important but for me when i teach the most effective way for me is saying we're jumping straight into this and i'll put the skis on for the child have them jump from french fries so for anybody listening french fries are when your skis are straight like this or like yeah, I'll take parallel these. basically. So, like having two black items, like two, like a black pen and a black um, colored pencil, is not the best to see right now. So, two randomized items right now. So, if your skis are straight, that's French fries. So, hopefully, everybody can see this. And if this is pizza, so I'll have the kids jump from French fries to pizza. That's all I'll do in their boots. I'll hold the tips of the skis and just say, I'll yell, pizza, and they'll just jump. French fries, I'll do that. And then I'll just say, slide, and they'll slide, and they'll instantly do pizza. Yes. And that's my teaching them that, especially first-timers that are older. So let's say 8 to 12-year-olds, um, or 8 to 14, because we teach – we've no, we even taught a 15-year-old the other day. Yeah. So – I had, a, I had a 15-year, yo, I had a 15-year-old named Gavin today. He was really cool. Oh, you taught him? Nice. His skis were too small for him, but it was okay because he did great. And that's also a problem. We need to fix that. We need to make sure yeah. the kids get the proper skis. Yeah, rental shops getting sloppy. 
I mean, it's almost the end of the season. I get it. But, like, this dude had, like, 130s, and he needed 150s. That's like – He was taller mm. than me, and I ride with 170s. I know. I ride with 178s, and I'm pretty sure – how tall are you, like 5'10"? 5'9". 5'9", I'm saying. The I'm nicest the same. type. Okay. The ni- yeah, the absolute best. But, yeah, I'm 5'9", and I rock 178s, which are, like, practically 180s. But – um. Exactly. They, they feel shorter than they are, but it's still a long ski, you know? So, either way, this kid had way too small skis, and he was struggling because of that. But it still worked out because he got to, like, parallel concepts, and he really learned how to slide around because the skis were smaller, easier to slide on. But, yeah, when I'm teaching, right, if I start with, like, small steps when I'm doing this stuff, find that they, they get a better understanding of what exactly is happening. And that's, like, how I teach, right? How I teach myself and how I learn – is by understanding exactly what is happening at every single moment, right? So, like, let's say a – I'm going to use a 180 as an example, right, off of, like, a little nub or something. Okay. The first thing that I want to do, right, is do it on flat. So I learned how to load up and spin, right? And as I'm doing it, right, I want to know at this point, okay, at this point, you're looking at it. At this point, you're loading up. This point, you initiate the spin. This point, bring your arms in, right? At this point, spot your landing. At this point, your tips touch. At this point, your tail touches. At that point, you ride out, right? Like, I want to know exactly what's happening and think about the things like, this is going to make no sense, but what gets me to, like, really, like, nitpick stuff and, like, figure out that's exactly what's making you, like, ski this way. This is why I'm good with, like, upper upper levels or like you know kids who can ski like wedge christies which for those of you who are listening and not skiers wedge christies when you make a pizza with your skis right you're basically making s turns across the hill now wedge christies can be either making parallel across the hill and then pizza in the turn right or it can be pizza all the way down but you're making nice wide like s turns down the hill in a pizza um but anyway like i can put what if you're making wedge christies or higher and there's something wrong with the way you're doing something, I'll be able to pick out exactly what it is because my secret is I think about the things that you don't normally think about, right? So, for example, how do you make your pizza, right? Or, yeah, how do you make your pizza, right? Slide your heels apart, right? Point your toes in, right? That's two things now. What else do you do? You flex your ankles, right? That's a third thing. that Maybe you're not thinking about the flex on your ankles, right? Stand right? on or- your inside heel. Yeah, stand on your inside, uh, stand on the inside of the leg, right? Like bring your knees inward a little bit so that your edges dig in. Those are like five or six different things that you probably wouldn't think about that the student definitely isn't thinking about, but you have to think about it for them and then tell them, okay, now this time, this one out of six things was wrong. And it's the same concept for every aspect of skiing, like hockey stopping, probably a couple more, like same amount of concepts, right? What are you doing? You're making a turn. What kind of turn is it? It's a parallel turn. How much pressure do you pressure ski to ski? You have more pressure on the outside ski. What are you doing with your knees? You're pointing them up the hill. What are you doing with your pressure? It's all on the outside ski. What are you doing with your ankles? They're flexed forward. What are you doing with your hips? You're leaning up the hill to dig the edges in your skis, you know? So like those like six or so things for every single ski concept. Think about the things you don't think about. Like I'm making parallel turns. Yes. How am I doing that? I'm carving my, I'm using the edges of my skis. I'm edging all my skis. I'm carving through the snow, right? How am I doing that? By leaning over a little bit and dropping my hips. Now, obscure question. What are my toes doing? Right? I don't know. I, I might not know that in the moment, but I have to think about it, right? That's something that you don't normally think about. Like, like, what am I doing with my toes right now? Or what am I doing with my ankles? It's like, oh, I'm doing this. Well, if I change this, how does that affect what I'm doing right now overall? You know, does that does that make sense? Like, it does. It does. Yeah. You gotta like so just kind of constantly be thinking. Like, for me, that's the like. A lot of kids are like, or a lot of instructors when they teach with me, they'll they get confused because of the way I teach. Because yeah. when you're taught, or like when you're getting taught how to teach. I've noticed that I've slowly just developed this throughout the last two seasons. I taught like I'll ski backwards and I've gotten a lot better at skiing backwards because I've yeah. been parallel yeah. ski backwards. God, I can't talk today. 
I go <laughs> parallel skiing backwards. And for me, that's just making me like just feel so much better as a skier. But I'll look at my kids the entire time. And a lot of instructors, yeah, they'll look back. So like what we do as instructors, for anybody that doesn't know, when we teach in like four or five with four or five kids, uh, anything above halfway up the beginner hill and higher is we'll usually do trains because the more experience they have following someone across the hill, the better they'll be. Because if they can make big turns across the hill, the better they're just going to be as an overall skier. Because if they could show that you can make big turns across a hill, <laughs> it just shows that they have the experience and the knowledge to move further. So I'll ski backwards the entire time and yell and kind of have them think. I'll think for them. So I'll be like, I'll be yelling the entire time. So I'll be like, don't forget that pizza. Don't forget those pizza turns. As I'm making the pizza turn, I'm yelling, do a pizza turn, pizza turn, pizza turn. Straight skis, straight skis, straight skis. And I know because there was a day last week where I jumped into one of the instructors we have. Her name is Mia. I'm not even going to pronounce it because it's not even like Ooh, Mar- Mia Marmalejos. I was going to say Mar- uh, Marmon Jados. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Marmalados. I joined Something like that. So I joined her group and I realized because I was at the time, Robin or our boss per se we um she had two lay kids come into the our program so she sent them out on the mound with one of our supervisors yeah and our super like on saturday i no it was, it was on sunday sunday in the morning i had a fantastic lesson because it was a one-on-one i got the girl it was her second lesson ever got her she was uh she was also i think she was a gymnast and an ice skater. So I got her from skiing second time ever, barely skiing halfway to doing parallel on blues. Nice. So, and like the, the entire thing I did was ski backwards and just yell at her, not yell at her, like saying, Oh yeah, but give her direction. Yeah. Just yell, like do this, do this. And throughout the entire thing, she just loved it. She just loved flying because when I ski, unfortunately I'm, not the slowest skier i love to go fast because i feel like the faster you go the more the more you could do yeah so, so that's, that's very good for the beginner hill especially because the faster you go over there the more like that like you experience speeds of the top of the mountain and the controlled environment so speed and doing things in speed like if you're making a turn really fast compared to really slow it's going to make you a better skier because what happens if you all of a sudden have to turn really fast or you're going to crash, you know? Exactly. It's the same concept, just in a controlled environment. So I had, like, I had this girl. She was, like, extremely tight turns, like, almost expert level turns. Like, that's how, yeah. like, tight they were. And it was a fantastic lesson. But so then in the afternoon, I kind of got the same thing with a different girl where – she it was like her second third time ever but she was able to go to the top and i joined a, another group and i pulled the um i was told take the i just joined a group because it was two kids from the three-fourths of the way to the top and i saw how the girl did compared to the boy that we had at the time and the boy was struggling a little so i said i'll take the girl higher so you so with this instructor at the time i'm not gonna say because it's kind of rude but yeah. it'll tie back into the Mia thing. But so she just worked on with the so she worked with the boy just to make sure he was a good skier. And I noticed that the girl can ski from the top or the top of the beginner. So I joined up with the girl Mia and her class. The way Mia likes to teach is I don't know, like I haven't skied with her enough to understand how her teaching style yeah. is. She likes to ski forward and just give directions before she does everything yeah and since she's so new she's still trying to do everything that they taught her and not yeah. develop her own teaching style yeah as which, understand yet, or understood it yet which, that's okay you know she will learn which we yeah we all started out at the same spot me like me what i find me. really interesting is that like yeah like there's certain cases where teaching by going in front is okay 
certain cases where you have to go step by step, right? And in, in the ski manual, in the Alpine Children's Manual, right, there's the five methods of teaching, right? And I forget exactly what they're called, but basically there's five methods of teaching. A couple examples include like task, which is when you give them like, like say, okay, it's called, it's called a constant direction, basically, or task direction, something like that. It's like, make your pizza, now French fries, now pizza, now French fries, you know, just simple stuff like that, telling them exactly what they're doing, right? Then you have like task discovery, which is when you give them a task and you just have them do it and try and figure something out about their skiing, like say, we're going to ski from here to there, you know? Then you have task guided discovery, which is like asking them after, like, what did you learn from that and talking about that, right? And got, there's like task guided discoveries when you give them a task and there's a right and a wrong answer to the question you're asking. Like, how did that make you feel? Like, lean forward as far as you can on your skis. Okay, now lean backwards as far as you can without bending your knees, your ankles, hips, anything like that. Like, staying straight up, lean forward, lean backwards. Now, which way could you lean further? The correct answer in this question is forwards because skis are made for forward pressure, right? So that's like task of guided discovery. And you have open guided discovery, right? Which is like, you give them a task. Like, say, like, I want you guys to try just tipping your skis side to side like this as you turn how did that make you feel you know and that's like it made me feel like this it made me feel like that so that can be at no wrong answers you know and then there's a fifth kind of teaching but i forget what it is and i think it's like really independent teaching you know um but there's only like sometimes like you give it like oh there's there's that there's some one of them that involves demonstration but you know like there might be like where you're where you're having trouble right with one specific thing it's like keeping a kid from making full s turns that's where you want to be like task guided discovery or like clo close ta like cl task um discovery whatever the hell i called it task enforcement tax task demonstration whatever the fuck but when you're like right there in front of them like do this now do that now do this now do that that's for nitpicking one small issue right if you're learning new things, if you're teaching new things, then you want to be more open-minded about it, right? You're going to be like, okay, check it out. We're going to ski down this hill. It's a bit steep, right? So how are we going to traverse this? How do you guys want How do you guys want to do it, you know? Have them, like, pick out the line that they're going to make. Like, we're going to turn there, and then we're going to turn there. And be like, okay, well, listen, I don't want you guys to make super huge pizzas, like snowplow size pizza, right? I want it to be nice. So let's try going across the hill more. And then you get to the bottom and ask them, like, now what happened when you skied across the hill? And the right answer is we slowed down, you know, and then they learn something from that. And it's, they're, they're thinking they're doing the work themselves, you know, like all you're doing is guiding them. Yeah. Well, I wasn't finished with my story. Oh, but... my bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I completely like, I understand where you're coming from completely. Like, there's every student has to have self discovery with themselves as well as the instructor because yeah especially for all the new ones i think that this is probably one of the best years we've had with new instructors yeah definitely we have a lot because when i was coming like when i first started there was about 30 people but all how many stayed like two so and it was me and one of the other instructors zach who does development and we're probably like the only two that stayed during my class. And that was about five, six years ago. Long but, time. So this year, I think that every single, like every single instructor that's come so far has been really good. And all the ones I've worked with so far have been really good. And I hope all of them stay like that's because I know next year when we finally do get the internationals, because unfortunately, because of COVID, for anybody that doesn't know, there are travel restrictions. So, which that means for us, so Shawnee Mountain every year has gotten internationals from Argentina, with like Taiwan, any like. I have fucking lot. There's Malaysia, but Taiwan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they come from Taiwan. <laughs> yes. Imagine they come with a sticker made in Taiwan. Well, well, okay, so Malaysia, my fault. <laughs> and like 
other spe- other different countries. So they come from all over. Yeah. So, fortunately, they could not come. So we had a lot. <laughs> so we had a lot of American teachers this year. So I want to say thank you to all the American instructors because I know, I almost guarantee, a lot of them are going to be watching this because I'm going to post this on YouTube. Oh yeah, for sure. They're all going to see it. Yes. So I hope that they do see this because it's, I want to do more of these because this is fun. But I want to say thank you because I know for my five or six years being here, there have been a lot of instructors that have come and go. But I hope you guys stay. Anyway, back to my story, just to finish it off. Yeah, it's, go it's ahead. It's been my- like three po- <laughs> So when I finally got to Mia's group, which is the girl that she had like four top of the beginner health, a lot of them like we're struggling with small parts, but she wanted to do like, oh, pretend like you have a grape in your boot and you got to squish it. But I was like, yeah. we re- I was like, in my mind, I was like, we really don't need to teach this because a lot of them are standing up tall anyway. So we really don't need to teach it. Let's just have them ski. And a lot of them, as soon as I showed up, they were like, who is this guy and what is he doing? But as soon as I started talking to them, because I was like, because I'm, I'm like, I'm going to start ye- like I'm going to start yelling so everybody <laughs> can hear. Not like yelling at you, but yeah. like yelling so all of you could hear. So I'm just like, okay, you got to do this when I say in a train. And as soon yeah. as I did that, they all instantly somehow became better skiers than they were with the other instructor, Mia. And Mia was just like, oh, okay. Just like confused. And then she was like, let me kind of like take over again. And I was like, yeah let me kind of take off because for (laughs) me if i'm teaching a lesson as much as i like taking the break sometimes and being like let me just take the back seat and just let other people do it sometimes if it's like a top top of like top of the mountain lesson and i know i can get these kids to be better than where they are and that's going to be the most important part about the entire thing so you you gotta take of course i wasn't trying to be like oh mia you're you're doing bad let me take over it was just more of kind of like a selfish just kind of like i know i could get these kids to be better because like i like making bets with people i like i made a bet with this one kid alex postreski i think his name is i (laughs) I butchered the name i know for a fact i butchered it we all know which alex you're talking about alex curly hair you know i'm talking to you about him Because I looked at this kid, I had, I think I had like two or three kids at the time because, because of COVID, we can't have eight kids out in the class. So it's about four because we had to split it in half. So I made a bet with this kid, Alex, because I had half of the beginner hell kids. So like, meaning they're raccoons, we call them raccoons. It's kids that are capable of skiing halfway (laughs) up the beginner hill, but not quite at the top. So I looked at this kid and I was like, I bet you I could get these kids to the top top of the beginning hill in less than 45 minutes, which classes are two hours. A lot of kids can't do it, which is unfortunate, but I looked at this kid, not even 20 minutes later, I look at this kid skiing down from the top of the hill. I ski right next to him and look at him and just go, you lost. <laughs> And he just looks at me and it was like, he was just like, I hate you. <laughs> and he just, he got mad because I did it and he couldn't. That's because funny. I proved him wrong. That's funny. And I was like, I did it. And he just did it like the way I went about it. But it was funny. Yeah. We laughed at for hours. Yeah. Well, dude, it's, you know, you're really good at doing those kind of things. Especially because you're a more experienced instructor. Like, you have more experience than a lot of people here. You know, like, you've probably been here for, like, what, five, six years now? Yes. Yeah. I've been here for three. That's, like, half that time. And I know a lot of things. So, imagine all the stuff that you know, you know? Like, I know nothing. Got in, experience outranks everything. In, in reality, I probably, like, as much as I think that I know everything, I really know nothing. Like, the amount of times where I've, the amount of times I've gone to like the clinic, like what we call clinics, 
for anybody that doesn't know, a clinic is something that they hold at like eight o'clock in the morning. For Not us. anymore, they don't. Well, because <laughs> of COVID. Season. Yeah, because of COVID. So yeah. what they would do is try to, they would have them about like once every two weeks, at least. Because like that's what I'm assuming. Because I, like, I just never went to it. So I developed, anytime I was teaching, I would just, if I had any questions, I would always ask one of the supervisors that we had on the mound, just being like, am I doing this correct? Or do you think this would work better than what I'm doing? Because for me, for anybody that wants to become a ski instructor, the best thing to do, especially if at Shawnee Mountain, is just to ask. Because oh, yeah. as much as like that's the cliche, oh, at any job, if you have any questions, just ask. Genuinely, like 95% of the lessons that I've taught, I don't, I've asked, am I doing this correctly? Yeah. Even to, even this season, the most, like the season that I'm the most experienced in, I have asked a few times, am I doing this correctly? There's only been a few handful of lessons where I have just not talked to or seen a supervisor and been like, let me just not ask because I am doing this fine. Yeah. Because as long as you ask, they're not going to be mad at you. Because why yeah, would that's... they want you to be, why would they be mad at you for asking a question about teaching? That's one people? of the great things about Shawnee is if you ask anyone who has experience, they're usually happy to tell you, you know? Because they'd rather except you for tell the, Except for the old farts up in ski school. As, as an instructor, I know you have seen many injuries. Oh, yeah. Tell us about the worst injury you've seen in person because for me, I have technically not seen an injury. I've only seen people get hurt. Yeah. So I will tell my story or my quick little story after you tell yours because I know for a fact you have a very interesting story about yeah. injury. Um, so mine was, the, mine was pretty freaky. It was pretty scary. Um, definitely like got the adrenaline rush, you know? Um, so before I, before I start going off on this, right. I just want to start by stating that yes, I am treated or trained in first aid. Like I have a certification. Yes. I carry a first aid kit to work. Right. But in no way was this injury treatable for first aid. Like I had to, I, I did not touch this girl in any way because I did not know how to treat her or what best to do because it was beyond my expertise. And I said, you know what? If this was an emergency situation, sure. But Ski Patrol will be here. So I'm going to let them take over. But anyway, I was up on Pennsylvania, right? About Pennsylvania is a green course at Shawnee. Just to preface yeah. this, we live in Pennsylvania and there's a Shawnee trail that we ski down called Pennsylvania it has to be the easiest one on the entire big oh, yeah. hill that we it have. Is. Now, being that it is the, being that it's the easiest trail, it's also crowded with the most Jerry's. And Jerry is basically someone who does not know how to ski or skis dangerously without knowing that they're skiing dangerously. It is one thing to smear around the mountain and to mess around and try and throw three sixties off of stuff. Right. And no, that you're doing it dangerously and accept the risk. It is another thing to ski out of control, right? Dangerously. That's not cool. But anyway, this day was busy because this was back when we didn't have a whole lot of snow. It was in the beginning of the season. So there were a lot of people on the hill, right? So my kids were having trouble getting down without falling and crashing because of how many people were also falling and crashing around them. And they had to avoid, right? So about halfway down Pennsylvania, right? Pennsylvania's got some really nice turns. There's a first turn and it goes straight for a little bit. And after the first turn and the straight bit, right, there's a bottleneck. The trail gets skin, thinner and then it goes, it's kind of like a dip, like goes straight, it goes like starts at the top, right? I don't know if I'm drawing this the right direction because camera might be reversed. It kind of goes down, right? And it goes straight. And there's like a little hump like that. And the bottlenecks at that hump, right? The trail gets thinner and steeper. So we're standing above that bottleneck. I know, you're ta- I I know what this you're talking about. Yeah, you know exactly where I'm talking about. Um, I'm standing above this bottleneck, right? I watch a snowboarder streak past me on the trail. I'm like, okay, she's probably having fun, right? She's on her own board and everything. 
she smeared around a bit, speed check, right? And there's a kicker on the right-hand side of PA. Explain what a kicker is. A kicker don't know. is basically a triangle-shaped jump. Basically, I'm going to draw a picture for you real quick. So you better understand <laughs> it, right? Okay, you're going to draw a photo for us. Yep. And I will rate your drawing skills on a scale from 1 to 10. So basically, a kicker, right, can look a variety of ways. So this is basically it, right? It's a triangle, or a curved triangle, and you go up it and off it. It sends you it into the air. It sends you into the air. It, it's a kicker because it's like like the kicker, like a horse can kick you hard. <laughs> it'll kick you hard into the air. I don't know, but it's called a kicker. So anyway... Basically, big jump, right? This one wasn't a big kicker, but it was still enough to get you, give you like a good six feet of air if you hit it high enough. This girl caught at least six feet of air. She goes full speed, hits it, right? Now she is snowboarding. Oh, was she? She was regular, right? Which means her left side's going down the hill first, right? She's like this. She hits the kicker. She goes up. She comes down and lands hard on her, not her shoulder, her forearm, right? on her left forearm and she's laying on her back like this like spread eagle and i'm like oh that looked like it hurt right because i'm standing up at the top of the bottleneck watching so my first priority is my kids always when i'm on the mountain when i'm free skiing i'll be like hey you okay you know but when i'm when i'm teaching i usually don't even worry about it this girl you know i look pretty bad she cartwheeled and landed pretty hard so i'm thinking hopefully she's okay and at the very worst i'll just wait a couple seconds and call ski patrol i get down to her right and i'm like hey are you okay and she's like, no, no, no. Like, she's like crying and saying, no, she's like, my arm, my arm. And then she, I'm like, okay, we might have something serious going on here, right? I get over to her, right? And she's on the phone, or her brother is on the phone with, like, or who I assume to be her brother anyway, is on the phone with um, their mom, because that's what I heard from them, right? So this girl's on the ground, like, her teeth are gritted. She's like, she's like in pain. You know, you can see it in her face, right? She's not having a fun time, right? So I'm like, what's happening, right? And at that moment, right, when I get over it and ask, like, what's going on, right, she just starts screaming, like, absolute bloody murder screaming, right? Because at that point, I guess the shock had worn off and pain started kicking in. And so I'm looking down at her arm, right? The first thing you do is you assess the injury. Then you assess the individual, right, and make sure they're, met, like, their facilities are in check because you want to make sure they're not bleeding out or anything, right? I look at her arm, right? I pull back like her jacket, right? Cause she's like wearing a super loose jacket. I can see her hoodie, right? She's wearing a hoodie underneath. And underneath that hoodie, you could see like a point sticking out like a pencil or something sticking out. Now, what I figured immediately was basically she snapped her arm in two. She actually snapped it in three places when I found out later, right? She broke it right about here, which is the break that I saw. She broke it in her elbow, right? So that's a really bad arm injury, right? So I'm looking down at this, like, this is, out, I'm realizing this is outside of my expertise level, right? Immediately I turn around, I see my kids are standing there. I'm like, okay, this is bad. Got to get them down the hill so they don't see any crazy uh, shit, right? So I said to her brother, I need you to hang up, okay? You can talk to your mom at the bottom right now. I'll take the kids, go 50 yards down the hill and keep them facing down the hill, okay? And then, so he did, he went and did that, right? This dude was really good because he watched the kids for like a half hour while like stuff was going on. So I go over to the girl, right? I grab her free hand, her good hand, and I say, hello, my name is Gavin. I'm a ski instructor. I'm here to help you. What's your name, right? And she's giving me, or I'm, she's like, my name's Ariana. I'm like, okay, Ariana, nice to meet you. I can see you have a problem with your arm. I'm going to make sure that your head is okay. And then she's like, okay, so I, did you hit your head? You have a headache. Are you dizzy? Um, like, are you nauseous? And she's like, no, no, no. And between every answer she would give me, like, she'd be like, she'd be explaining herself, and then she'd be like, sorry, 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 right? Like, she'd start apologizing, and then she'd start screaming, right? And apologizing that she was screaming. And I was like, oh, shit, this is pretty bad. But it's, like, you have to think, her mind is racing a mile a minute. Because yeah. she, like, three cases, like, three things went through her mind. I don't yes. know how I'm getting down this hill. That's probably the first thing. Second yeah. thing is, I just broke my arm. Yeah. And three, this is the worst pain I have ever felt in my yeah. life. Because not only are you thinking, not, you're not only thinking of the pain in that moment. Like I've had a couple of those moments. 
you're not only thinking about the pain unless it's like bad. What you're thinking about is how scary it is that you just broke yourself. You know, like, what did I just do to myself? That's what you're thinking about. Like I messed up my knee in the beginning of the season. And even though it wasn't that bad as I was skiing down, I wasn't worrying about how much it was hurting. I was worried about like, what did I just do to myself? Did I hurt myself bad? Is this like, am I going to be good? You know, but she was probably thinking about that. So anyway, I make sure that her, she's like, okay, right. I got out of her, her name, her age and where she lived. And I remember her name was Ariana and she was 19. All the other information, there's no need for me to tell you guys, but I basically got out of her the right, like, why do you remember it though? I don't remember it. I didn't ask her her like specific address, but you know, she's like, where are you from? New York. And I'm like, okay, but just um, doxing people at that point. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Reads out her apartment number, but no, um, I, I basically asked her like the simple questions, right. I made sure that like her eyes weren't like going nuts made sure that she wasn't like seriously concussed. Okay. She might've had a concussion. I don't know. I'll never know, but she wasn't, she did not have a brain, a traumatic brain injury. That is what you check for. Right. So after this, I'm like, okay, your arm looks like it's broken. I'm going to sit here with you until ski patrol gets down. Right. At this point I gave her, like, I took off her glove from her good hand and I said, here, I know you're built. Like, I know it's bad bite down on this. Right. Um, so anyway, it, I get up, right. My first priority is call ski patrol, right? So I pull out my phone. I have the Shawnee Mountain number saved in or saved in my contacts, right? I call them. As you should. The operator. Press zero. Call, call Shawnee Mountain. Press zero for operator, right? They say, hello. And I'm like, I need ski patrol. They direct me to ski patrol because you can't call extensions. Um, and I don't know the ski patrol extension, although I know ours is 231. Um, well, you could just say like, I'm, so. You could say the department or you could say the extension. Well, no, uh, I know, like, when you call Shawnee, so, like, I think, like, I, like, if I looked at the keypad, I'm not going to say it out loud because yeah, that's kind of, like, weird if I say, like, what number they're extent. So, if you type, if you just type in their phone number and then hit the keypad and then just immediately type it, like, just tap the one button that the extension is. Yeah. Then it just instantly sends you. Well, that's so, for departments. They don't have ski patrol on that. They have children's department, but they don't have ski patrol. Oh. Uh, so anyway, just like for me, I haven't gone that far to figure that out yet. Gotcha. Because I know I've had a couple. I've had a couple times where I've had this call ski patrol, and I've been like, "There's no extension for this," and they're like, "Yeah, no, sorry." Um, but but anyway, be. I call I call ski patrol right, and they're and I'm like, "Okay, I describe my location right. I'm on, I'm on down about halfway between the top of PA and Meadows, Upper Pennsylvania, right? Uh, skier right, describing my position right. And I was like, "I'll flag you guys down here." You guys need to come down with a toboggan, okay? And they're like, okay. And that, like, for those of you who don't know, ski patrol protocol is to send one skier down, right, and see, like, how they're how they're doing and how they are, assess the injury, and then if it's bad enough, then send another two ski patrol members down with a toboggan to transport the injured party down the mountain, right? So I was like, send it down now. This is bad, right? This is the first time I've ever seen them send it down immediately. So because right after that, it. right after that, right, I'm like, okay, next priority, traffic control. Priority after that, injured party, right? So I pulled two people from the hill because she's this girl screaming bloody murder and people are staring. So I'm like, you, you, come over here, right? And you guys are gonna help me direct traffic. They pop off their skis. Super cool dudes. I never got their names or anything, but they were super cool. They they listened exactly what I said and they did exactly what I said to do, right? So I said, stand, you stand here. You stand here. And I took all their poles and made X's in the snow, like right above the girl. And I said, you guys stand here. Make sure nobody hits that jump. Because if they hit that jump, they're going to go straight into her. Make sure nobody comes over here. And at that point, I started screaming at people like, if you have no reason to be here, get the hell down now. You have no, there's no reason for you to be here. Because there's a girl screaming. People are gathering around. You know, you got the bystander effect. And that's what you want to try to reduce that emergency services can get in and get out quickly and treat her, right? So I'm having people gathering around. I'm like, yo, get out of here, right? Because then in that moment, you also have to think, the more people that are staring at her, the worse that she thinks it is because I don't, because she probably doesn't fully, like she fully doesn't. What's going on, yeah. So you have to think, the more people are staring, the worse she thinks it is. Like, Well, not only that, right? People can crowd around. You might not be able to get to the injured party people not paying attention on the ski hill, someone might come down and crash into them. 
neither way it creates an an obstacle something that doesn't you that does not need to be there and cause you grief so get rid of it you know but that's what i did i got rid of that problem right and i went back to ariana and i held her hand and she just like she was squeezing the hell out of my hand right and i'm like i called 911 at that point because i was like they're probably gonna want an ambulance because this is pretty freaking bad this is like ambulance worthy right so i call and i've i've never called 911 in my life before right never i've had situations where other people have called 911 there was a crazy event over the summertime, um, which we'll save for another podcast. But um, this is the first time I've physically dialed the numbers 911 into my phone. And I was like, I described what was going on. I'm like, look, I, I'm the, it's not an emergency for me. It's not. Oh, you just disappeared, Gavin. My bad. Uh, it's in low <laughs> battery mode. God I said, this isn't for me. I'm at Shawnee Mountain. I have an injured. I'm a ski instructor. I have an injured party. What I need you guys to do is send an ambulance to 401 Hollow Road at the Ski Patrol Shack. I'm sure you guys have called this in before, right? They're like, okay, we got you. No problem, right? We have an ambulance on your way. And I'm like, I need to hang up now because I'm teaching a lesson and I have somebody to worry about, okay? And they're like, okay, so you, you go do that. The ambulance is on the way. We'll contact Ski Patrol. And at this point, I actually have the screenshots um, of the uh, dispatch, uh, the scanner dispatch readings, right? And it says, like, what people were saying, what was happening. And if you want me to send that to you, Andy, I will, so you can include that in this. I don't know if you want uh, to or not. We'll, um, we'll discuss but, afterwards. Gotcha. Anyway, um, so... Not for not saying that people wouldn't want to see, but, like, just because it might be confidential. Like, we, like... We I don't mean, it was know. released on Facebook on a, from a news, like, source, so it wasn't, like, private information, you know? It's called yeah. Matt's News Alerts, which is a local news service, and he released it. So okay, I don't know. So we'll if, discuss afterwards. Yeah, we'll figure that out later. But anyway, right? From what I heard, at this point, ambulance dispatch to 401 Hollow Road, right? Shawnee Mountain Ski Area. So that was happening, right? And then I went back over to Ariana and made sure she was okay, and I was looking for Ski Patrol. Ski Patrol comes down. I say, I flag him down, right? I have him pull in. I say, okay, this is what's going on. Her arm is broken. I can see her bone point sticking out, right? You guys need to stabilize that and get her down. I have a lesson. Can I go? And they're like, yes, you can go. Get it, like, get out of here, right? So I made sure that, like, everything was good. I pop on my skis. I go down to my kids. And now, I, right after I left, I started thinking about it, like, holy shit, that was fucking bad. Because um, that was probably, like, the worst injury I've ever seen in my life. Um and I was thinking about that, like, that could have been anyone. That could have been me if I was on the snowboard, you know? And, like, what what got to me the worst wasn't, like, looking at it because I've seen a lot of blood before. Like, I saw I saw somebody slice their arm open real bad. I've seen people nicked by chainsaws. It's not that that got to me. It was just the way she was screaming, dude. Like, there was nothing that I could do to stop it. And I wanted to stop, like, her screaming so bad because it just sounded so terrible. And those of you who have, like, heard it, like, no. Like, it, it sucks to hear just someone, like, fully screaming like like terror in your voice you hear it but um so i was thinking about that for the rest of the lesson and the kids were like i was like are you guys okay and they were like yeah we're okay what just happened like they were all like happy and stuff because they were laughing and you were just like i was like we're not gonna talk about it i was like i was like just like vietnam stare dude i actually made it a teaching moment because they wanted to ask they were asking what was happening i was like look a snowboarder hit a jump and they fell probably broke their arm they're going to be okay, you know, but they probably broke their arm because they heard the girl screaming, you know, they knew something bad happened. They were like, okay, she's going to be okay. Like they were concerned. I was like, yeah, she'll be all right. Now look, I use it as a teaching moment, right? On a busy day to like today, don't do that kind of stuff. Right. And like, if something ever happens, here's what you do. If anyone ever gets hurt, like your family, this is what you do. You get more, you need to call ski patrol on your phone or you need to go send someone down to them. And if someone ever gets hurt, you know, Make your skis across the hill. Make, put your skis above the person in the shape of an X and put your poles up there too to mark off the hill. Make sure no one crashes in them. They were like, okay, you know, use it as a teaching moment. Then the rest of the lesson, we kind of just had fun because I did not want to teach. And we, I just like, you know, like free ski to here, ski down to that point, ski down to that point. We just did that for the entire lesson. Um, and then, yeah, that was, pretty, that was pretty eventful. And a lot of people asked me questions and I was just like, I don't want to talk about it. Um, cause in the, cause after the past couple of days, the past couple of days, I, or the couple of days following that were like, yeah, I just don't want to think about it. Don't want to talk about it. You know? Um, but from, in, from, uh, in a way you, you know, can think it, about it like this. 
you I don't I don't care now, you know, like it's 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 in the past now. You but just then like I didn't want to think about like her arm like looking like a spaghetti noodle, you know. From what I know, her arm was not amputated because because it was saved in time. That's from what I No, heard. yeah. Okay. So you saved somebody's arm. So you kind of became a hero, a superhero. I I would this say league that. All tied together, <laughs> huh? No, okay. No, I was just doing like what I was supposed to do because that's what you're supposed to do in that, those kind of situations. You know, somebody has to take somebody, and you see a situation like that, somebody has to take charge in the situation, you know. And it's like, if somebody else was doing it, I probably would have pulled up to help. If somebody was like already like at her side, I would have pulled up to help, but I wouldn't have like been like, I would let them handle it. But nobody was doing that. So that's like a point where like you have to put yourself out there and you have to become the person, you know, like this is like that, like that was like, that's all you, you know, somebody gets hurt. That's all you, you need to, you need to organize what's happening, how to get them to safety and whatnot and stuff like that. Highly recommend any ski instructors out there, right? CPR and first aid training are always good to have for no matter what reason, right? Um, Cause you know, your life saving, life saving trainings, right? Um, I do not remember much from my CPR. I kind of, cause I was young when I did it. I kind of remember, I kind of remember what to do, but I would not feel comfortable giving somebody CPR today unless gotta, I was the, the absolute last person to do it. You First gotta aid, do it to the Bee Gees. Yeah. Huh, well, staying alive. Huh, huh, uh, huh, uh, staying alive. Uh, staying alive. Huh. And you do that for, you do that for two verses or something. Um, it's like two minutes. <laughs> no, it's 20, it's 20 seconds. Oh, yeah, it's 20 second intervals, right? 20 second intervals, three breaths. I'm pretty sure I would not feel comfortable doing that though. Cause I don't remember all that much, but either way, um, I think it's, yeah, it's hand over the other. Yeah. So, you, you know, take first aid and CPR training because like, it's always good to have, but especially if you're going to become a ski instructor, you're working with kids, you know, what happens if a kid gets hurt? Like that's not a good situation. And you need to be able to see your way out of it quickly. An adult is a little bit different. But when, like, Andy and I ex almost exclusively teach kids because we work in the children's department, right? Like, sure, I'll teach lessons at the end of the day, but usually I teach kids. And you need to, like, when you're when they're there with you for your, your like, two hours or however long the lesson is, like it or not, you are their sole protector, right? Like, you're the dude who's looking out for them. You're the dude who's counting your kids. Make sure you have, like, everybody there and nobody got, like, snatched or You lost are their god for the moment. Yeah, you, like have to take, you have to take care of them and make sure nobody gets hurt. If somebody does get hurt, you need to know what, to, what needs to happen, right? Because even with her arm, you know, like she would have lived. But what if something serious happens, you know, like critical blood loss? How do you control that, you know? Like a lot of you'd be surprised how many people don't know what happens to like what you need to do to control like blood loss, right? Like last year, um, my friend Aiden, another instructor, he's a snowboard instructor. Um, I was on the lift at the time and I watched this go down sort of kind of, and it was pretty scary. Apparently he was snowboarding with his friends, right? This one of his friends, a girl fell and then another person ran over her arm with the snowboard, right? Now snowboards and skis have sharp edges. Like if you control on slippery surfaces like ice, once you dig into the slope and carve, right? So you, dig, you got like your flats and you top up on the edges of your skis. Well, those are metal edges, right? They're cut at either a one or zero degree angle, which means you have either a 90 degree or an 89 degree um, grade on your, on your um, what's it called, on your edges. So anyway, they're sharp, right? And it's like getting a paper cut when you get one. So this girl, right, she, she got her arm right over by the board and the board's edge cut her down to the bone on her forearm, right? That's not good. So she's now uh -huh. experiencing blood loss at a massive rate. Aiden was right there. He did the right thing. He took off his jacket, his shirt, and his gloves and everything and plugged that up, right? And he said he got frostbite because he wasn't wearing anything. And then he sent one of his friends up the hill to go grab ski patrol. And I watched his friend, like, run up the hill and run inside ski patrol. And I was like, oh, crap, that's pretty bad. I better not go down that trail. And I went down a different trail. Um, it would have been funny if you went down that trail. Huh? Said so it would have probably been funny if you went down that trail. Anyway. No, it wouldn't have been. I didn't want to see that. I was like, yeah, that's a, he's got it already. So I didn't no, know. Like if you told the story, like if you were just like, well, I shouldn't go down the trail. I'll go down anyway. Nah. 
<laughs> but I'm st- I'm just um, dumb like that. But yeah, know, it was fine. uh, it was pretty freaky, and for Aiden, that had to be pretty rough because watching somebody lose blood at that quick of a rate is pretty scary. I've seen that yeah, fourteen a years times. old. It's pretty yeah, especially yeah, because they were both like that's really scary. And the fact that there's no one there except you to deal with that, like that can be pretty intimidating, but he handled it well and she's fine, you know, like, but my point is what happens in that situation, you know, like instructors should be prepared. So that's why I did your trainings. They're worth it. Yeah. And like every single person I feel like will experience or witness a, something gruesome, at, like not gruesome, like murder, meaning like, Someone will break a bone in front of them. Yeah, a bad get, incident. Yeah, like a bad occurrence that happened to someone else. It may not be them, but they will witness it. Like, yeah. Thankfully for my life, I have not broken a bone. Knock on wood. I will. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I have a wood desk. I have not broken a bone yet. I have been safe, but gotcha. I have witnessed people like skiing wise, and because I also play baseball, baseball wise, people get ridiculously hurt off of stupid things not oh, yeah. breaking bones like i was on the beginner hill probably last year because the learning center so the learning center is like the way we teach and not on public side on the public side but because we had no snow on that side we had to stay on the public side there was a snowboard who decided to stop in the middle of the way and jump like 12 feet as he jumped and you're spinning as he jumped, a skier came barreling down and took out his legs, and he landed on his neck. I've never seen oh something God. so, like, jaw-dropping. And I, at the time, I had a six-year-old girl who I was yeah. teaching at the time because it was a one-on-one. It was kind of like one of those kind of rainy days when nobody showed up. But like, That would probably look pretty bad. Like, you probably cringed, right? I was... The girl was like the little girl I was laughing. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me just assess the situation before I have a full on reaction to this, because I know for a fact I would have laughed. Yeah, if I wasn't. Like seeing people get hurt is funny, but <laughs> when you're thinking about it, it's not, you know. But like, I checked on him. He's he was okay. I just went back to the girl. Yeah, he just was laughing still. So I laughed, and then like even with baseball. The worst thing I've ever seen in person, like I've seen gruesome stuff where someone's got hit in the face with a baseball, like on TV, but like also. Oh, like, okay. So like if someone hits the ball and it comes back to the pitcher, awful. But the oh. worst thing, it was someone was stealing second. It yeah. was my 10th grade year at senior night. So senior night, the event that we'd held for all the seniors unfortunately we couldn't do it for my senior year because of covid yeah but sorry you dude. know what it's fine you know what like it's fine i don't mind we had i got to celebrate my own way it's in the past dude Hakuna Matata, you know exactly but <laughs> i'm just making this sad but <laughs> <laughs> what happened was it was this kid named dom montante at the time, I've known I was like I knew this kid for like a few years at the point because we played little league together, and he's about two years older than me. But he was the second baseman, and as the the runner from first to second, he dove over the batter or he dove over the runner to catch mm. the ball, but it, the ball missed his glove and took out his two front teeth. Aye. Oh my god! <laughs> and. His two front teeth were on the ground. And oh, he just man. sat there like this because he realized what happened. And yeah. we're all just sitting there. And he just smiled. He was just like, no, nah, it's black right here. And it's just like, oh, that's, oh, that must have been out. Yeah. Because you know they gave me. Dude, like, that would hurt. Yeah, I freaking, dude, I put my face straight into the landing of a um, mountain bike jump that I was making over the summertime, I broke my nose. And the first thing I did was lick all, like I licked my teeth and make sure that like, okay, they're all still there. Cause I hit the ground so hard. My face just went straight into it. Right. And I was like, I thought to myself, you for sure, you broke your nose 
and you for sure lost a tooth or chipped your tooth. And thank God they were all still there. And, and then I like, took a picture of myself to make sure that my teeth were still there. And I was okay. And I was like, okay, that's pretty bad. I also thought I broke my jaw because my jaw got like slammed really hard. Um, and I didn't, but it was really sore for a couple of days. You were like, I think I broke my jaw, like slanted. But yeah, yeah sec- I, it wasn't slanted, but it hurt to like bite something on the one side. But yeah, anyway. I do have the second one. I'm not going to say who it was that did it, but there was like one of the, it was, it was my junior year. It was one of like the new players in baseball. The second inch. I was watching this kid swing off like one of the tees. So a tee in baseball, I, I this is just an explained cat like podcast because I feel like a lot of like a lot of people don't know sports terms. So a tee is something it's where a baseball plate is on the ground, it has a little tube. So like this Arizona, say this is the piping, and we put the ball on top. So we adjust it between our knees and our like armpits and that's how like how we practice swinging if we don't have anybody to help so i watched this kid just be reckless swinging oh i know what you're talking about don't say the names because i'm not gonna but i know what you're talking about because it's kind of i don't want to be just like rude but i watched this kid to his own like brother swing and clock his brother in the forehead with a yeah. baseball bat at full force. And we just, like, the coach was just like, everybody leave now. And it was the most gruesome, like, the most, that was probably the most gruesome thing I have ever witnessed in person. Yeah. That one was pretty bad. Because, like, like it's yeah. And, like, with you, like, with the girl, you fortunately didn't see. I at least hope you I didn't, didn't see, see the it. bone. I didn't see the bone because oh. it was it was underneath her hoodie, oh. and I wasn't gonna, I wasn't about to cut that out, you know, and like touch it. I was like, okay, this is outside of my, I could see it's outside of my expertise level. Let the professionals handle it, which is another really good point to make. If you're ever in a situation, let the pros handle it. They they're trained to do it, you know. So yeah, fort like unfortunately for us, we watched that happen and just yeah, boom, it was nasty i like i remember specifically where like i sound like i'm talking slower i yeah i'm like i remember specifically where i was in that moment like if i'm thinking about it i like i remember i was behind the batting cages and we would hit into the cage so it was like a rectangle yes so i was on i was on i was right behind where the badgers were hitting on the one rectangle side and he was so like so say if this is the rectangle. I'm here and he is here or back here and just clocked him. The most yeah. it was weird. Like it was just Dude, I was not in the gym at that moment. I was standing right outside the door, so I didn't see it happen. But I heard I remember it because I heard the crack, right? Because it sounded terrible. And I look in and like I'm like and I'm seeing like dude on the ground right and i'm seeing everyone walk out the gym and i'm like what's going on what's going on and i you know i asked what was happening and i was told and i was like oh god that's terrible and then the next day dude came in with like stitches over at band-aids and stitches so he was okay but we were just like that was that was pretty it. rough because that really could have been a lot worse than it was you know oh, yeah. like he could have it could have been a lot worse faux show but you know like, it was okay. so bad. Wow. We've been talking for a little while. We have. <laughs> it's been, been a good amount. Of time. It's been a good amount. Of time. I'd say about 40 minutes or so. Probably. So, Something like that. 40, 50 minutes. I pro- it's probably longer, not gonna lie. <laughs> so let me let you go because all right. I know it's like 10 50 at night. I know you have school in the morning. Yeah. I, I have school. Too. Yeah. And I'm sorry for keeping you up late. We had yeah, this. Re- don't worry about it. We had this recorded last week, but unfortunately, under certain circumstances, the video was bad. Yeah. It was terrible. But this is a better setup. I like this more. 
because we sound natural. We don't sound like we're not trying to talk over others. There's no people interrupting yeah. us. I see you got your little kitty in the background. Yeah, cat. Cat. That. See, so I say cat, and she lifts her head. What cat is? Is it just named Cat? I I call her Cat. Her name's Cleo. Hello, Cleo. But I just say Cat because that's what she is. She's a cat. Do you spell like, cat K A T? No, hell no. Like, you ever see Daryl in The Walking Dead? No. Now he's he had a, at one point he had a dog and he just called it dog. You know, that's kind of like what I do. Yeah, but cat's cool. No, he's it's cat's a girl, right? Yeah, I want to get a dog. Want to want to get a German Shepherd. German no, Shepherds are fucking no. awesome. Get pit, get a pit bull. The best dogs in the world. I don't I know. Pit, pit bulls are cool, but German Shepherds are pretty nice. I have two pit bulls, best dogs in the world. Aiden's got a uh, pit bull German Shepherd mix. His name is Boog. He's really cool. I got two. I got two pit bulls, a male and female, and then Bonnie and Clyde. Right. Yeah. I follow ass. the Bonnie and Clyde account. And that's at. I'm pretty sure. I don't even know what's it. Pit bulls underscore Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, others. you guys should all go follow I that. Could play. I think that, yeah, Pipples underscore Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie is spelled B O N N I E and A N D Clyde. C Y wait C L Y D E. <laughs> We're doing D Y L D E. So, Gavin, before you go, yeah, is there anything that you have planned in the future? Because um, I know you run a very important. Instagram page for yourself, the Shawnee yeah. Send Getter. The sh- oh, the, I always Send say, here. I always say Send Shawnee here. Send Getters, but it's oh. the sh- Shawnee. It's like Shawnee Dot Engineers. Yeah, that's Send Engineers, like like engineer, but set with Send in it. I'll post. I'll put it somewhere for gotcha for the audience. Yeah, follow that. We post sick clips. And it's not just me either. We're we're a group, you know. Like there's more than one of us. Skiers and snowboarders alike. Everyone is welcome. And if, yeah. you want, if you want to contact Gavin about any questions about skiing, because he is a professional ski instructor and a professional nice guy. And one thing that <laughs> I wish we could have gotten into was bikes, because I know you're an avid bike person. Oh, but we could get into that. We can get into that in the next episode because I'm not an avid bike person. We could talk about that next time. Sure. Yeah. I'd be down. But- Do you have any this man, before I, because I keep saying, this man biked almost 70 miles in one day. You definitely, have you clocked in at 100 yet? Um, not quite yet. Um, I've been getting, I, I got very close. There was one day that I did like 96 and I, I told everyone like, yeah, I did 100, but I haven't actually made that mark. So um, this summer it starts to get warm out again. I'm going to do it. It'll be pretty cool. Um, like I'm, also going to, I'm going to Colorado sometime um, with one of my uncles, um, the cool uncle, I'm pretty sure. And we're going to go out on the because he rode bikes and I have a road bike. I, I do mountain biking, but I have a road bike. And um, we're going to go ride the Rocky Mountains. It's going to be really cool. Awesome. You better have footage of that. You better record that. I will. It's going to, dude, I'm going to get so much. I'm going to get clips. I'm going to have a GoPro for when I ride and freaking. I'm gonna take pictures too. You know what you should honestly do? What? You should like you should make a YouTube channel and post. I should. And just start recording all anytime you bike. And then yeah. even, even like on these, you could live stream your long bike rides. I probably could. That that actually might not be like a bad idea. People keep saying I should make a engineers TikTok, but I don't like TikTok, so I'm not gonna do it. Although YouTube, I'd be down for a YouTube channel. Because, yeah, like YouTube, it's just. That's an OG whatever. move. Yeah, it's Make whatever it's whatever content you want. You don't have to be trendy. Exactly. As long but as yeah. you're having fun. Because if you, if you live stream, say, because you'd have to do it in places where there's internet, obviously, and you'd have to have unlimited Wi-Fi. So well, I, have, I do have unlimited data. Yeah, unlimited data. I'll have to do that, though. So, like, if you did from your house to Stroudsburg, you definitely can make it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I do that all the time. 
I'll have to do that actually. I'll I'll have to that'd be cool. POV me biking. <laughs> no, I'd have my phone like on the handlebar facing up at me so I could talk to people. And I just uh, swap it and it would show the road. Like if I hit the flip camera, it would show the road. There's so much that like I just remembered one thing. Remember I keep the guy just want to let you go, but I just remembered. Okay. Remember your birthday where you almost died because you almost got robbed. Right. Oh my god. Yeah, and you guys gave me the cool card. I still Jeez. have that, you know. I have that. Like I saved that card. It's in my lockbox right now because it's one of the freaking best things I've ever received. That was so funny. You were just it like was so good. We were like, Gavin's an hour and a half late to his own birthday party. Where could he be? Yeah. You show up. You're like this like disgruntled. Gavin, what happened? Yeah. Some guys just pulled a gun on me. Yeah, it was pretty fucking bad. I mean, it was okay. Like, I, it didn't get my bike because I just kept it locked and I just ran and you couldn't get the lock. I called the cops. So funny. It's like, not yeah. for you, but like for No, us. not for me, but yeah, now I laugh about it now, you know. <laughs> but yeah, an hour and a half late to my own birthday. <laughs> I was 15. I was turning 15. That's what it was. Wait, was I? I was. That was two Wait. years ago. No, I wasn't. You 16? I was turning 16. Or I had just turned 16. That's what it was. I think so. Because I got the bike that they tried to steal for my birthday, for my 16th birthday. I'm getting old. Wow. I can't believe that was like a year and a half ago. I'll be 19 in two weeks. Shut up about being. Wow. Oh, my God. You're going to be 19, dude. Holy shit. I know. Yeah, You are two years older than me, so that makes sense. So I'm 17. But either way, anyway, let me get going. I have homework to do. All right. Thank you for everybody watching this. This is the Justice League. Thanks for having me, Andy. Talk to you next time. Talk to you later. Before you finally go, promote your yeah. Instagram, your own Instagram, not the Shawnee's Engineers. Oh, yeah. Follow me at Gavin Pierogies. Yes, Pierogies is spelled the correct way. I think it's Gavin.Pierogies. Or if yeah. that doesn't work, Gavin underscore pierogies. Yes. Yeah. Just look up two. Gavin pierogies. That's Gavin, oh. G-A-V-I-N, P-I-E-R-O-G-I-E-S. So, yeah, follow that. And no, that is not my real last name. Anyway, have a fantastic night. Have a good night, Gavin. So, that was Gavin. Very interesting man. I hope to have him on again. He is my first guest on the Justice League. The background may change soon, but I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Please like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. This was very fun for me to do. I enjoyed this conversation very much. I hope you guys have a good rest of your night. Good night, guys.